On April 13, 2004, Melissa Stockwell's life changed in an instant. While serving in Baghdad, the 24-year-old was critically injured by a roadside bomb. The retired first lieutenant lost her left leg, becoming the first female U.S. service member to lose a limb in Operation Iraqi Freedom. Melissa went on to endure 15 surgeries, and finally, after 52 days, the former gymnast made her first steps on her prosthetic limb. In doing so, Melissa became a living testament to strength and also took her first steps toward a new challenge, becoming a Paralympian. Cheers. Now drink it. So I'd gone 24 years of my life with both my mm -hmm. legs, suddenly I'm missing one, so there's a lot of... I mean, honestly, very initially, I found out I was rushed into a life-saving surgery right in central Baghdad in an American hospital. Mm -hmm. um, I woke up, and it wasn't until I woke up where I learned that my leg wasn't there. So immediately, I remember being, I, I was happy it was me and not another one of my soldiers, because I knew that I um, had the strength to get through it and that I had a great support system. After her surgeries and their many complications, Melissa was eventually fitted with a prosthetic leg and adjusted to what she calls her new normal. It's interesting that you called it a new normal because every time you've spoken about what happened to you, you always had such an optimistic, positive outlook on things. But was there ever a moment when you thought, why is this happening to me and, and can I get through this? Will my body let me get through this? Sure. You know, I, I chose really on to accept the loss of my leg. It wasn't going to grow back. <laughs> so I had, you know, two choices. I either could accept it or I could co live in that constant state of, mm -hmm. of why me. And at Walter Reed, you know, I looked around and there were so many that were worse off than I was. Um, missing two, three, four limbs, traumatic brain injuries or eyesight. So I really felt that I was extremely lucky. I'd only lost one leg. I had everything else about me and I just, you know, I... I ha if I had any, you know, why me moments, they were very brief. Um, I had my family and friends by me to support me and to get me through them. And a lot of times we just reassured each other. And I don't know, I knew, I just, I knew that things would be okay. After Melissa got used to her prosthetic, she also got a surprising invitation. So when you did get approached in 2008, what was your immediate reaction? Like, yes, I am on board or little trepidatious? No, it was. Um, so I learned about the U.S. Paralympics mm -hmm. um, a couple months after I lost my leg. And it was this opportunity to, you know, represent my country as somebody with a physical disability on the world's biggest athletic stage. And as a child, I was a gymnast. I dreamed of going to the Olympics. So it was kind of like I had a second chance. So mm -hmm. there was no hesitation. It was somehow, some way, I was going to be a Paralympian. I wanted to be on that stage with the USA uniform on and to mm -hmm. represent this country I defended over in Iraq. So it was pretty immediate. And you're going to do it again? Yes. I, I hope to be in Rio this September. Um, and if everything goes as planned, we actually race on September 11th. So it's um, pretty special. Melissa is a proud member of Team Chobani and credits part of her athletic success to her diet as she prepares for the Rio 2016 Paralympic Games. I juggle training and being a mom, so mm -hmm. yeah. um, a lot of swimming, biking, and running. You know, I wake up, I wake my son up, we, we have our breakfast, go on a walk. I either swim, I bike, I run. I probably spend about two and a half to three hours training every day and then come home, you know, spend time with my son. My husband comes home from work, we have dinner as a family, and then, you know, it's, it's a, every day is new, it's, all, it's different, it's a busy life, but it's one I wouldn't trade for anything. You have been called a hero by many. What do you think of that title being applied to yourself? Um, it's definitely not one that I ever thought would be in the same sentence as, as, as my name. Um, I mean, I, I can't say I think of myself as a, as a hero. I mean, in my mind, I just do the things I do every day because I enjoy them and I'm passionate about what I do and I want to, you know, give back. And if somebody calls me a hero and if that in turn inspires somebody to maybe do something that they didn't think they could do or maybe there's somebody missing a leg that wants to go, you know, go learn how to run. Well, maybe they think, oh, maybe if she did it, I can do it too. Mm -hmm. So if that's what a hero is, then, I mean, I'm, I'm honored to be called one. I just... Never something I thought. Melissa told us that while she and her fellow military members have made sacrifices to our nation, they do not serve alone, as their families and loved ones are also directly impacted. Those soldiers that go over to protect our freedom, um, they sacrifice so much to go over, but it's also the loved ones back home. I mean, it's you tell someone thank you for your service, but it's it's a family affair. I mean, you have the caregivers back home, the the spouses, the children, and it's it's an all-encompassing sacrifice. To keep up to date on Melissa Stockwell's road to the 2016 Paralympic Games in Rio de Janeiro, go to teamusa.org. I'm Diana Falzone for Heroes at Home on foxnews.com.